Hi, Airfun here with the Six-Legged Aggie. Every once in a while, I have submissions for new insect identification requests. Uh, it really helps to know what plant the insect was on. That's kind of half the battle. In this case, it is on salvia. And uh, if you take a closer look, you might be able to see some insects on the leaves. They are also on the stems. And uh, just by looking at it, I can already tell some type of a mealybug. In this case, the grower knew that it was a mealybug, but they wanted to know specifically what type. Uh, because knowing what type of mealybug can tell you what other types of plants it might get on. So a lot of these insects can be relatively specific, or at least uh, in the case of a lot of mealybugs, th they can get on a lot of different types of, a lot of different families of plants, but there are certain ones they won't get onto depending on the species. So that way you can know which ones not to be too concerned about. So what I'll usually do when I receive them is I will look at them under the microscope and under some level of magnification. So in this case, I'm working at about, oh, 1.2 times. I think these are 10X. So I'm looking at about 10 times, somewhere between 10 and 20 times magnification in order to see some of the main characters of this insect. So it helps be able to see the matures, the immatures, in this case, the egg sacs as well, because those can all be some identifying features when it comes to trying to find out what I'm dealing with. Now, us entomologists, even though there might be some common species we deal with on a regular basis, we are no uh, super gurus, right? We don't know everything that occurs out there. So we also, you know, will rely on some of these handy guides. So this one's a little field guide, mealybugs and mealybug lookalikes of the southeastern United States. And, you know, it has a list of different types of mealybugs and some of the main characters to look for. So that's what I'll do, is I'll look under the microscope, Again, so I'm looking at, uh, in this case, some of the matures. I can see them moving around. I see a dark band that's going down uh, the back. You can also see that there are some waxy filaments that aren't protruding too long. So there are some mealybugs that have called long, long-tailed mealybugs. There's very long uh, waxy filaments coming off the rear. In this case, they're not very long. They're kind of short and relatively even around the back. Uh, the egg sacs, you can see, is you know quite filamentous, uh, yellowish eggs, and it really helps to have some type of uh, measuring ruler or measuring device. So I will have, uh, in this case, I have this little plastic kind of ruler that has both centimeters and inches on there, so I can put it right next to the specimen on the same plane of focus and measure the approximate length. So in this case, after looking at uh, several different adults, looking at some of the immatures and the eggs, uh, I've kind of concluded based on this guide that it looks like I'm dealing with uh, the citrus mealybug. So I can get back to this grower and let them know what they got. Hopefully, you know, so citrus mealybug is, uh, it's considered an invasive or exotic, so it's, it wasn't native here, but it's been here since the late 1800s. So it's, it's pretty well established. Uh, I'm really hoping you can get on tropical hibiscus as well because this is what I'm going to use to infest our tropical hibiscus that we have here for an insecticide trial. So we're testing a number of different insecticides against mealybugs and the first thing I need to do is establish mealybugs on several plants so I can have a replicated trial, right? So I can have several plants that are treated with the same insecticide and make sure that our result is consistent, uh, you know, regardless of, of what plant it's on, uh, that we get good management. So anyways, that's a quick little view into what I do when I get a little insect specimen for insect ID. Thanks for tuning in.